Welcome to Settle in Spain. We're the Settles. I'm Amanda. There's my husband David. He's away working at the moment. He'll be back soon. Our dog Otis and our cats Chewy and Impy. We've had lots of new subscribers recently, so welcome to you and welcome back to everybody who's been sticking with us and following along on this crazy journey. I'm in the yard of the rental house doing today's introduction. You can probably hear the odd bird in the background. That's because it's very early morning here and the morning chorus is only just finished. For those of you who don't know, we're in the mountains of Andalusia in the region of Almeria about 10 kilometers from the house that we've purchased, not far from the village of Aurea. The house wasn't quite livable when we first purchased it. Uh, the plumbing was non-existent, the electrics dodgy to say the least, and it needs a lot of work. So that's what this process is all about, documenting our journey uh, and our crazy adventure as we continue to renovate the property. And eventually, I have big plans for the land too. The sun hasn't quite come over the mountain in the hamlet where we're renting yet, but it's just hitting the almond fields down below us there. <laughs> Hello, I know. Yes, we don't do kisses. Mm, try not to anyway. I know. Yes, I love you too. We'll go for a walk in a minute, okay? Promise. We've just got to do this first. Is that all right? Yeah? Okay. Ooh, he's not too sure, is he? So, yes, this is the yard of the rental place. We've been renting here for a year. We've had our anniversary of moving into this property in August of 2021 was when we came up here. Before that, we were renting about 40 minutes away further towards the coast. We've been in Spain for two years this August. I would recommend to anyone thinking of coming to live in Spain to rent first. It's a huge country with many different regions and towns and villages all have different things to offer. And it's really so much to look at online. You need to come and experience and see what it's like really. So that's my tip for you. Rent first and find the place that really speaks to you and your family. We found that in this village of Aurea and we feel really lucky to have found the community that speaks to our hearts. This week, the video has been very delayed. There's a bit more information about the technical difficulties that we had with this mobile phone, which is our main device for recording the videos later on and those technical difficulties have continued to plague me. It's been a week of problems with cameras. Settle down, Otis. It would be easier, you know. Thank you. <laughs> In this week's video, you've got plumbing investigation and working on those beautiful old beams in the property. If you remember from our last video, we were looking into where our septic system is, at the back of the warehouse, in the land, just across the road from where the property is. This week, we go in search of where the septic actually comes out of the house itself. I said the house doesn't have much plumbing, it really doesn't. There are two taps in one room downstairs, that's it. Other than that, we have an outside bathroom in the back alley courtyard of the property. And we needed to work out where that septic is going through that courtyard and out of the house so that we can plan the plumbing we're going to put into the house to go into that septic system. The other thing was working on the beams. I start the very long process of turning those beams back to beautiful wood. They're covered in lime and paint and really thickly covered. And we really start to see just how amazing they are as they become revealed for the first time in many, many, many years. 
There isn't a long road trip this week, but there is part of a trip I made to go to Murthia Airport to collect friends. I must admit, after all the trips I've done to Alicante Airport, Murthia Airport was a pleasant surprise. It was quiet, it was easy to access. I'd recommend anyone coming into the region to fly into there rather than Alicante if you can, because it was much easier to get in and out of there. And a walk with Otis and the cats in the village here in the evenings. Otis is wanting me to play with him now. He's just bringing his ball over. So I better wrap this up pretty quickly. So once again, apologies for this video being so late. I did think it was all going to be ready for you on Wednesday or Thursday at the latest. And then I found there were still technical difficulties with some of the parts of the video I'd recorded and this is now Thursday morning and I'm having to completely retake some of the bits including the introduction. Hopefully you're going to see this on Friday, maybe Thursday night at the latest, we'll see how long it takes to upload to YouTube. So once again, welcome back everybody. Don't forget to click on the subscription, the thumbs up and do comment below. There's been some amazing conversations within the comments in the last couple of weeks, despite the fact that I didn't manage to get a video up. And it's wonderful to see the community that's starting to build within this platform, which is just an amazing experience. So thank you guys and do continue to comment below. Thanks, I hope you enjoy this week's and I'll see you on the next one. For those who haven't been following along, this then is where we are this week. This was the old dining room when we first came into the property and through that doorway there was the kitchen. We've taken the wall down between the two, it was already falling down and we are turning these into a bathroom and utility room. We're prioritising this area so that we can move into the house quicker. So to do that, David is going to be outside in the small yard, sorting out the plumbing. This then is going to be a very noisy, very dusty, very messy job and all of it is directly overhead. So a lot of stretching of the old arms, that's for sure. Luckily at the back here the ceiling is very low and I'm quite tall so I didn't need to get on a ladder too often just occasionally to do some very top bits close up. This then is the process of cleaning off those beams. I'll explain a bit more later how I'm doing it and what I'm using and a little bit about the safety aspects of this as well. But you can see they really are starting to look just amazing. I still can't believe looking at this video how much they changed and really how relatively quickly, though this is going to be a long hard process. There's a lot of these beams in the property. Just getting this first room done is, is amazing to see. And another day, another t-shirt. It's amazing how messy and mucky you get doing this job. Mm -hmm. 
some of you might notice I'm wearing a different face mask in this one. We're trying out different things and I'll tell you all about that another time. Meanwhile, Dave is outside breaking up that concrete and looking for what's underneath and he's going to explain a bit more about that to you in a moment. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is having a look at how we're going to sort the plumbing out. Now, we're right in the, um, I guess you'd call it the northeast corner of the house. This is where the water traditionally came in. It's actually behind Amanda's back at the moment. We'll get around to that in a minute. So there's two taps inside of there. And this is the, um, this is the bathroom. So that's the only plumbing that's in the house. And I've basically taken the top off here, which is the exit from the toilet, which is the, uh, what do you call it? Soil, the soil uh, dirt, the black yeah. water, whatever you call it, yeah. That disappears into a sump down there and then there's a plastic pipe that comes out of here and goes rotate around there, <laughs> rotate around there, <laughs> across that road, underneath that road, below that wall and into the potholes on the other side of there. Okay. okay, so when we plumb the house, when we plumb the house, we're going to plumb into this pipe. So that everything comes out of the house and <laughs> goes off into the popper. I don't know if Amanda's already shown you the pipe, but I finally found it. And there it is. That's our, that's our main drain. That is going to be the main drain from the house. It looks about um, 100 to 125 mil, so it's going to be good enough for this house. And just underneath here, which you can't see, is a very rusty hot water pipe. Um, which just goes into the kitchen. There was a kitchen tap and that is about it. So this is going to be a real pain in the butt because we're going to have to run the plumbing underneath the concrete floor all the way from the other corner of the house and all the way from the bathroom we're going to put in there and we're also going to have a rainwater drain out the back coming out coming from out the back so that we don't flood everybody over the other side of us. Nightmare. <laughs> Go on then. Okay, so this is what we're using to do to break the concrete. Um, and this we bought brand new for 100 euros. Admittedly, it was second hand, but it was still brand new, i.e., it had never been used. Made by this company here, which you'll see all you'll see this stuff for sale on um, you know on Amazon and whatever. And it's from China, I guess. Very, 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 very cheap stuff. This thing seems to be working quite well already and um, I guess it's probably done us 100 euros worth of work and it's still going absolutely strong. Um, quite, a, quite a heavy old beast. Yeah, does the job. Now of course the problems with digging a trench in a small space is you've got to put the content somewhere. I'd done a couple of hours on the beams and my battery had run out, so I then went out and gave David a hand and we've stacked that in one of the back rooms for the moment. This then was a very long and hot job. Hard work with the heat waves we've been having recently and hotter in the afternoons as the sun came round on that little courtyard.
Hi, so it is Monday. No, it's not. <laughs> I lied, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday and it's the 9th of August. I've got this on because I have been working on these beams. Now, oh, I owe you an apology. Sorry, there wasn't a video last week. We had a technical hitch. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll go into that in a minute. It is very dusty in this room right now because we've been working on these beams. So, uh, last week we had three days, I think, over at the house in total and we worked on a trench outside in the yard of this room here. This was the room that was a dining room when we first came into the house with the small kitchen off it that we're turning into the utility and bathroom. One of the things we needed to sort out, last time we were looking at the septic system and working out where that is, a neighbour has pointed to the area, which is still somewhere under concrete at the back of the warehouse. Uh, the exact location still escapes us slightly, but we'll get there. In the meantime, we know that we have a system there and it is working, so that's good news. Now, what we needed to work out was where the sewer... Well, we don't really have a sewer system, let's face it, there are no sewers here. We're in the countryside, we're in the campo. Everybody has their own individual septic system. But we do have a soil pipe that goes out of the house and goes down into our septic system. So, we needed to find out where that was. Now, the plumbing in the house is really, really minimal. In the back of what was the kitchen, just over there, I'll insert a clip here for you. There's two taps. There's a hot tap and a cold tap, and underneath it, you can't really call it a sink. It's a concrete section with a very rusty old hole in it that leads off out of the wall. That basin obviously drains somewhere. Just off the courtyard, so you go outside into the little courtyard, we have an outdoor bathroom. There is a bathroom there with shower, toilet, sink and a bidet. They like their bidets here in Spain. And that we knew there was a soil pipe going outside somewhere across the road and out the other side. We found the other side of it last week. Um, we were looking down that to try and find our septic system. So, first thing we did then, we lifted off the cover outside that bathroom area to look down, saw yes, it goes down and then it goes off at an angle. So then we got to work out where underneath that concrete out there it all was. So it's time to dig a trench. <laughs> um, I did have a bit of a laugh with Dave. It turns out they really do, apparently, teach them how to dig trenches in the army. He did drink, dig trenches. Um, so that was his job. <laughs> I, I had a little go myself. I took away the rubble, mainly. That was my job. Um, I did have a go on the big j -j -j thing. I still can't remember the name of that. Uh, Dave was digging the trench while I was taking away the soil and the concrete and great big rocks. There was a whole mixture of stuff down there. We did find a bit of plastic pipe, so that was quite reassuring. It was modern-ish, um, and the size we would expect for the system. Not far from that, there was then well, a big bit of concrete, a big concrete square. Uh, it turns out that was connecting to a completely different type of pipe, a very old sewage-style pipe, uh, the time type that the council would use up in the main village.
then worked out where that was going to the gate. So we probably should have started at the gate and just dug, but we didn't, we started the other end. We then wanted to find out if the pipe or the drainage underneath the outdoor sink out there, if that went down and across the same way under the road. So were they running under the road side by side? It kind of makes sense just to have the one trench. Yeah, no, they don't. <laughs> that would be too easy. The pipe under that sink is much higher up than the other sewage system and runs separately across the road. So then we thought, right, okay. Maybe, maybe this sink in the corner here, maybe the drainage from that goes down into that big sewer pipe and goes across. So we dug that side. No. No, that goes straight out the wall and disappears across the road in a completely different area. We don't know where that comes out. I'm guessing somewhere closer to the sewage tank. Um, so yeah, that wasn't any help either. Mm, bit distracted. We have a wasp problem at the moment. Our neighbours, I know, have got a nest up in their roof. And today we seem to have a lot of wasps hanging around in that courtyard um, looking for new nests. So maybe they've managed to destroy it. I don't know. Okay, I'll keep an eye on that. <laughs> so yeah, the pipe from the sink in here goes separately across the road. I think what we're going to do with that is just block it off. Completely block it, stop anything coming in or going out. Get rid. Forget it's there. We don't need it anyway. Our plan then, going forward, was to dig further under the pipe, find out more about the size of it and what it's made of. We spoke to our neighbour Derek who is a whiz when it comes to plumbing and electrics and I think the plan that we're going to have going ahead is we're going to cut that old um, sewage pipe off, we're going to leave it going running underneath the road and we're going to run new pipe inside. So we're going to get a new plastic sewage pipe to run inside there and another pipe to run alongside it to take the grey water because we're going to have them going separately. And the existing grey water pipe that was being used for the sink just isn't high enough to take the grey water from the house. We stepped down quite a way into the house from that yard. So we need to be low enough to get the water going off down and I really want to collect that grey water and use it over on the land. I've accidentally in inverted commas, I've accidentally cut the plumbing out of the kitchen. Look at all of this. This was the hot water supply for the kitchen. And it's in tatters now, it's in bits. Look how rusty and horrible that is. That is a lovely piece of, I don't know, it's some kind of old steel. And it's horrific, and it weighs a ton. No, it's going straight in the skip. It has no place to carry water into a home. No, <laughs> that's right. Yes. Unfortunately, I've left myself with an open pipe now. So, I'm going to have to cap that off tomorrow. And I'm sincerely hoping that I don't have to thread it in the old manner. That hole will be, re be revealed tomorrow. The main reason why I've cut that out is so that I can get access this area here. This pipe is basically suspended about a foot above. It was still a few inches below the surface but obviously you can see I've, I've took most of it out now. We're going to bring our main plumbing out of the wall here. Which I could probably actually punch through with this. Oops, I better not do that again. <laughs> that basically goes into the bathroom. We're going to bring the plumbing out of here and stick it into the main drain. I'm not 100% sure what this is, it's cast iron or something, I'm not sure. I'll have to look into how, how I cut into that. Um, say cut into it. You might just cut it off there and put plastic plumbing down the middle of it. Because all this does is it goes under the road um, before it drops down into the poffer. What did I say poffer? You did say poffer. Our septic uh, system. Septic well, we don't system. actually know what it is yet, do we? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But it's coming up to seven o'clock, and um, I fancy some vino. <laughs> it takes about half an hour to 
half an hour to clear up, of course, <laughs> which isn't going to be the case when we finally do move in here. So, yeah. yeah, then we can just stop for Vino. It won't matter yeah. if we clear up. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We've looked at this before, haven't we? We have once before, yeah, but not everybody watches from the beginning, do they? Okay. Here's the mains coming in here. Comes in at nine bar. Nice. The pumping station's just up there. And we're at a thousand, thousand meters. Comes in there. That's our auxiliary tap. This goes into the garage. Um, so, yeah. That basically um, takes the pressure down to three bar. A valve. It's not a valve. Anyway, I'm just opening the uh, mains water. And then we go. I just wasn't expecting that. No. So I thought there's a tap that we could shut it off at, but anyway, it hasn't worked out like that well. We'll work it out. Goodbye to Amanda's toilet. <laughs> <laughs> there's always a bucket. Yes. <laughs> Today, Dave's working on isolating the hot water. Unfortunately, we couldn't work out how to isolate it. Uh, there is no stop cap and stop cap. Is it called a stop cap? Hmm. Stop, stop. Hmm. There is no tap to turn on or off <laughs> near to the hot water system to turn the hot water off going across to this room. So we had a look in the bathroom. Surely somewhere in there, there must be a tap we can turn off to turn off the hot water. No. We had a look on the hot water tank. Would there be a tap there? There is a little one, completely broken, no longer works. So we then had a look and I think I might have suggested to David that he tries looking inside the wall on the inside of the bathroom where the, the hot water pipe seems to go out to go underneath the pathway. Maybe somewhere near there, there's something couldn't see anything there either. So, what we're going to do is completely isolate the hot water tank and disconnect that. He's just headed off to a hardware store in the village to see if we can get something to actually cap it off with. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. I believe Dave bumped into you on the way to the hardware store and you gave us some advice on this. So, just to explain then what happened last week and why you didn't get a video. Sanding, it turns out, causes a lot of dust. This is quite an old iPhone that I used to record this on. We bought it second hand over two years ago before we left Greece to come across to Spain. It's an iPhone X. Yeah, iPhone X. And you've got the camera on the back. Everything was working fine. Thought it was. Um, recorded a load of video, went to see some friends, took a few photographs of their dog and our dog playing and all sorts of other things. The next day came along, did a bit more video and then I'm looking and thinking, either my glasses need changing or it's all out of focus. And it was absolutely everything was out of focus from most of the day before and most of that day. We only did three days here last week and half of it is missing, more than half of it was missing. It just wasn't in focus. So the cover over the lens on your back of your mobile had come loose. I'm guessing maybe it had been repaired in the past or maybe it's just the heat. We've had some very hot weather for several weeks now. And this very fine dust from me doing the sanding had got underneath and into the lens area and everything was out of focus. It, it was unusable as a camera anymore. Bit of a panic, but you know, kind of thought, what can we do? Well, we can have a go at taking it apart ourselves and fixing it. It's been a question mark for a while now about maybe getting me a new mobile phone. No, we're not doing that yet. That's, that's an expense we don't need right now. The other option was to actually go down to the phone shop. The guys I get my mobile service off have fixed um, the phone once before when the glass 
needed replacing. So I went down there and yes, <laughs> the guys at Digi were able to sort it out for us. There's a Digi phone shop, one in Arbalaeus and one in All Box. And the guy in the All Box one is the technician who can fix things, it's, it seems. So we dropped it in there. It took a couple of hours and only cost 10 euros. It's working again. It does mean that while I'm doing any sanding, this is not going to be filmed. <laughs> We're not going to risk that happening again. I don't want to uh, lose the phone completely and the ability to share with you what's going on. That would be crazy just for the sake of a little bit of video. We'll occasionally, I guess, have David come in and video bits and pieces as I'm doing it. We'll get the odd bit on the GoPro, but we're going to keep the mobile phone away from this very fine dust as much as possible. my mates could see me now, digging a trench with a pink trowel. Unbelievable. Impy, what do you think? With the heat waves we've been having one after the other, all of the walks with Otis are taking place early morning and late evening. Impy and Chewy do join us on those walks as always. And on one of our walks this week, I noticed this tree. I don't know why I hadn't noticed before. Amazingly, it's a mulberry tree and the mulberries are just about ripe. I also had a chance to visit a different airport this week, picking up some friends who were coming back from the UK from Murthia Airport. An interesting experience for both me and Otis. All too soon I was dropping Dave back at Alicante Airport and Otis was enjoying the fresh air on an early morning trip with the windows open. Thank you for joining us on our journey this week. Don't forget to subscribe, click that bell button, like and comment below and I'll see you on the next one.